Now we want to apply what we've learned about linear regression lines to another example. This one's our old standard of the SAT participation rates for different states and the median math scores. And by old standards, I mean we saw it once before. Okay, so for the U.S. colleges and universities, students take a standard entrance exam, the ACT or the SAT, usually dependent by state. The following computer output considers the relationship between the percentage participating in SATs for each state and the median math SAT scores for those states. Math SAT scores are out of a possible 800, right? So that's the highest you could get. Now I realized as I was doing this, and I'm sorry um, if you're watching this in fall of 2015, I accidentally left this 123 right here. That's a typo. It should be 1.23 right there next to the participation. And similarly down here next to participation, it should be 1.229 instead of 122. So please fix that right this second. Later semesters, this will mean nothing to you because I will have it fixed by then. Okay, so that typo aside, now we need to figure out what our explanatory variable is. So when we look at the scatter plot over here, you can tell the explanatory variable is the x-axis variable, so generally. So that would be the percentage of the state that's participating in the SAT. That's your explanatory variable. It's, it's sort of like your x from algebra class but it's not as formulaic as, as x is in algebra. The response variable is the median math score, right? your y variable. So there are those two. Now the regression equation is a little bit hard to spot, so let me give you guys a little um, view of what it is. So it's this right here. When they write that math equals 588 minus 1.23, right? Change that number, 1.23. Let me highlight this in red for you. That part right there is the regression equation. I mean, it even says the regression equation is that. So that is our regression equation. Now I have to change it because I had it wrong before. It's 1.23. Now let's look at that for a second. The way that statistics programs write it is they'll write it with this number in front minus 1.23x. And there's a very good reason for that. It's because if you go on in statistics, you'll add on more and more and more variables, right? And they'll all tack on to the back end of that, other x's, if you will. But for our purposes, um, it doesn't matter if you want to write it this way, which is fine. But we're more used to, um, at this level, seeing it in an algebra context, which is written more like this. Where it's, so it's a x plus b, okay? So either when, either way, um, you want to write it is fine. I tend to stick more with the right hand side just because that's what students are more comfortable with. So hopefully you are one of those students and it is more comfortable for you. But the other one's perfectly acceptable. But notice that the program doesn't write it out in y's and x's. It writes it out in terms of math and participation, which we get from right here, math and participation. So because math is our y variable, participation is our x variable, those become our y and our x when we write it out in more algebraic form. All right, now the slope is one point, not 123, but 1.23, and it's negative. You can tell that it's negative a lot of ways. One, you see the negative sign here and then in front of participation right there. And you can tell that the slope of this line is negative when you look at it. Now what does that mean? That means every time a state has an increase in 1% of the students taking the SATs, that means that their median math score is expected to drop by 1.23 points. So not too much, right? But it'll add up, right? So you start off at the 500s and then you keep going down, going down, going down, going down. By the time you get to the 80s, you're in the 500s, right, straight up 500, as opposed to 580. All right, now what about the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept did not have a typo in it. It was 588. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're a state that's over here on the far left edge at zero, so you have 0% participating, you would be expected to be, have a median math score of 588. Now notice that doesn't actually make any sense because no, if nobody's taking the test, then how are they getting a score of 588? And the answer is that it doesn't make sense, but you can imagine, you know, if there were only like three people in the state taking the test or something like that, you know, it'd be very close to that value. Right? 
All right. Now, what about Michigan? Michigan has a 4% participation in the SATs up until this year, I believe, because we are switching over as a state to SAT instead of ACT. All right. So that means you need to take negative 1.23 times 4 plus 588. And that gets us 583. Oh, here, I, I was doing it on my own calculator, but I'll do it right here. Negative, make sure you use that little negative sign down there. 1.23 parentheses, 4, and then plus 588, and 583.08. So let me put that in here. And that's your answer. Um, the unit for it is score. It doesn't really have its own unit. Um, so I guess we could just say points. How about that? Because um, it is points on the assignment, or on the SAT. All right. Oh, and so I guess we should say that here as well. We should give it unit right there for letter E. I'm sorry. The y-intercept should also have points as its um, unit. All right, we are all done with that example, and I'll see you back here for the next example in another video.